from Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. Are you drinking again? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Headlights on across North America. Ladies, if you got a nice pair of cans, show the Tom Likas listeners what you got. We flash you. You flash us. That's simple. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes, anything at all. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we're going to kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. Sandra on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Okay, I hope you understand. I have a little accent. Accent. I do. Okay. Well, uh, the last caller, well, I, I, you were a little mean to her, but I do want to say in places I'm from Colombia. And in Colombia, you don't dare go out to be a very big bathing suit or showing your body because they will taunt and make fun of you. You mean if you're fat? Uh, if you're fat. You don't go out in public just showing yourself off like no, that. No, you do not, because they will literally, and, I, and I've been there, I go every uh, December vacation, and um, right there, there was a very big woman, and it was uh, in summer over there, very warm <laughs> during December. She was going down like a toboggan, like a slide, a water slide, and everybody in the water park turned to look at her and was saying, uh, eh, mal parida, eh, don't, uh, no, in Spanish. They're like uh, making fun of her and laughing at her. Yes, now I I was in Colombia and uh, the, I see I wasn't imagining that I I looked around and all the time I was there I didn't see any fat women on the street at all. We're not fat and I think about diet uh, we don't eat everything. I notice I go to uh, Colombia I lose weight I come back thinner. That's because we have very big portions here, and in, in Colombia you drink fruit juices, and you eat fruit, and you eat smaller portions. I, I know, I've been there. Yeah, and it, in, uh, I've, been to, I've been to Italy, and I've been to France and, uh, for vacation, and uh, they walk around a lot, too. Right here, every you go to the corner for a store, you drive the car, and even uh, anything. We don't, we don't walk anywhere. And uh, when you were in Italy and France, you also didn't see big, fat women walking around, did you? No. Actually, very beautiful people. Gorgeous men. Yes. Very, very good-looking people. But And I think but I don't like to make fun of the people here, too. I do, I do think that they're responsible for what they eat and they consume in their body. But I wouldn't. I mean, not that I would want to go to a club where there's a lot of fat people. I think it's the... If, if I, I find it repulsive. But... Uh, <laughs> I, you know, you know what's interesting. You have these women calling in, and they're saying, "Well, uh, some of us just have uh, uh, d d d issues. Uh, we have problems, medical problems." It's like, well, you have human beings in all the other countries I've been to. How come they don't have medical problems like that? Uh, very true. Very true. Because in this country is very also very. Um, we have a lot of luxuries, and the food. Instead of going home and making food, you go and you stop by McDonald's and you buy. Uh, food there instead of making it and you don't see that too much in foreign countries yes. and that's why we have so many health problems and this is not to put any of the women down but uh, I don't see how a, a man would be very attractive to a woman who's weighing 300 pounds well we I, don't the only men who go with women like that are men who are too poor to get a thin one oh I thought it well 
uh, I married, uh, and I think it was a lot because of my look, but uh, which is a very start also. By the way, McDo even McDonald's is a different uh, different situation in other countries, including Colombia, uh, because we have things at McDonald's here that you don't get at other McDonald's. Uh, the the thing called double quarter pounder with cheese, you only get that in the United States. They don't have that in Colombia or Italy or France. Uh, they don't. Uh, what we call small fries at McDonald's here, that's large fries everywhere else. Very interesting. Very interesting. I go into McDonald's. I, I was when I was in Italy. There's a McDonald's near the Spanish Steps. I'm a McDonald's freak. I'm fascinated with McDonald's and the marketing and the packaging, and I've always been fascinated with it. And and in other countries, they don't sell these big portions that Americans demand here. They don't. Yes, and you, I'm sure you know. In, in many countries, uh, the Americans not like very much. It's uh, it's so. Uh, uh, even in, uh, I mean, in Colombia, we like your money. We take it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't you liked it so much, you moved right in. Actually, I married somebody. They're, they're okay financially. But I wanna there we just, go. Yes. Can, can I just say this comment? And I want to know what you think. Okay. Uh, when I was very young in school, I had a teacher uh, tell me, um, and I found it very insulting, that um, be, that my looks would get me ahead. And uh, that I'd be able to uh, marry somebody that uh, had money so that I didn't have to worry about school. Well, it turned out to be true, didn't it? Uh, yes and no, because I'm also uh, formally educated. And I think part of it went because I don't want little girls to, to think that they, their looks are going to get to my head. And at that point, I didn't think much of it. But I said, this teacher thinks I'm stupid, that I'm, I'm going to need a man to take care of me. And we ended up happening that, yes, I'm taken care of, but... Uh, but I want to know what you think that, I mean, if you had a doctor and I know you don't like kids, would you be okay with somebody of authority, such as a teacher, say, uh, 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 saying that, that uh, they don't... Um that the looks should get them ahead. Do you think well, they other countries have different uh, rules. Um, for example, I know in Colombia, when you go to work, the boss will sexually harass you, uh, chase you around the office, demand that you sleep with him, might fire you if you get fat or don't look good. I know that in Colombia, when you apply for a job, they, they ask you for a photograph of yourself. Yes, they do. If you do reception, anything reception, is if you work in an office, if you work in selling shoes, they want a picture before they even interview you. Right. So if you're not really attractive, they don't even hire you. So you see, the rules are different. In this country, you could never get away with that. But in Colombia and many other countries, by the way, uh, they, they have a whole different set of rules. And that, that would include, I imagine, the teacher making a comment like that. If a teacher like that made a comment in this country, he'd be fired. Very, very sad and very interesting. It's a different culture, and it's a difference in culture. And I'm sure you've found a lot of differences, good ones and bad ones. Yes, I, I have. And part of it, this is why I go every year, Colombia, every year, because here the holidays are boring. <laughs> mm, now, now, do you, let me ask you the question I ask every woman from Latin America. I'm going to ask you the same question, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you use a dishwasher? No. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't met one yet. I, I have a dishwasher. I, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, I have a nice home. I have a ni I don't need to work, even though I uh, sometimes choose to. Uh, but uh, no, I think it's just because culture. We are, uh, and it's not saying that American women are not good, but it's uh, you're brought up that way. You wash and you clean, and you take care of the kids, and you do groceries, and you cook, and you do everything else. Yes, but as I say to every woman from Latin America who I've ever met, you don't wash your clothes on a rock uh, out by the stream. You put them in the washing machine, right? Right. So if the washing machine is good enough, why not the dishwasher? I don't know. It's because they don't come out that clean. You have to rewash them. <laughs> you got to buy a good one. Oh, maybe. maybe. I, dated, I dated a woman one time who was uh, from Venezuela, and I was at her house, and she made dinner for me. And after dinner, I was trying to be a nice guest, and I went and took my plate, and rather than letting her clean the table, I picked up my plate and my knife and my fork and went to put it in the dishwasher. And when I opened the dishwasher, do you know what I found? Nothing. I found a plastic bag, and inside the plastic bag was the owner's manual and the warranty card. The, wa the dishwasher had never been used. 
Interesting. And now, and now, but the thing is, I, I, I ask this question of women from Latin America all the time, and they always give me the same answer. They don't use dishwashers. They don't come at the same clean. They're not, they still use two water rewash them, so you might as wash them once. There's a saying actually in Spanish, and it's el, el huevón trabaja doble, which means if you're lazy, you're going to work double. Now, so you it, might as well do it just in this time. Now, you know, when you go to a restaurant, they put the dishes in a dishwasher. You know that. Yeah, that's why I check my dishes, and if any, sometimes they look dirty. I rather go wash them. So it was Tom, thank you so much for taking my call. I of enjoy course. your show. Most uh, just when you're not very nice to people, I sometimes get mad at you, but I love your show. <laughs> Well, that's okay, and um, I'm, I'm glad you're here and uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying your husband and his uh, resources. That's good. Yeah, the money's always good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Going to do the dishes by hand with the kind of money she married into. I'd wash his feet by hand. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing okay, John. All right. I'm 24 years old. I'm new to L.A. I got a fabulous new show since I got here. It's amazing. Love it. Thank you. Follow your rules since I've uh, been out of, out of high school since 18 years old. But I uh, got a new job. I've uh, finished my master's degree working on a second and I have some money currently, and I'm wondering, uh, what should I do with that? I maxed out my 401k, um, have some extra cash. I'd rather uh, stay liquid, though. So what do you think? Well, if you're going to stay liquid, uh, staying liquid means you're going to put it in, like, a money market account or something. And, uh, then you're liquid. I, well, as liquid, I mean, I just don't want to invest in real estate. The, uh, you think, you think it would be a good call to invest in the real estate, though? No. 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 Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you have a Roth IRA? Uh, I do not have an IRA. Just my 401 to my employer. Well, you should also have an IRA. An IRA as well? Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, you should. Uh, uh, you can choose a Roth IRA or what's called a traditional IRA. And okay. and you can deposit up to $4,000 a year in that. And that $4,000, uh, if you deposit in a traditional IRA, the 4000 is deducted from your uh, taxable income so that you pay, if you make $50,000, you put $4,000 in an IRA, you pay tax on 46000 Okay. Instead okay. of fifty. If you put it in a Roth IRA, that's money after taxes, but when you withdraw the money later on, you don't pay any taxes on it at that time. Okay, so in addition to the IRA, what else should I do? Well, how much extra cash do you have? I uh, start off at eighty k a year. So, uh, no, but how much bad. cash do you have I mean, after oh, 80K? Yeah, I have about 40K in my bank account right now. Oh, you have 40K in your bank account. Now, are all your bills paid? Uh, Debt free. I, I was on scholarship the whole way. So there's no car loan or anything? No car loan. No uh, leased car where you're paying uh, monthly on that or anything? I've had the same car for nine years, man. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, well, if I were you, but you, you say you want to stay liquid, you know, do you know anything about real estate? <laughs> I know nothing about real estate. Yeah, well, if you, I don't know if you've been reading the paper, but people are pretty much saying that we're at the beginning of a huge downturn in the real estate industry. Okay. Have you been reading that? Uh, I've seen it all over the news. So now, if you, this is a good time to buy a house if you want to live in it. But forget about the idea of buying a house as an investment and flipping it because you might own that house for years and years right? without being able to sell it for what you paid for it because prices are going down. That's what I was worried about because uh, people recommended me buying a condo, but I, I, think, I think it's a poor investment right Not now. Not as an investment. I mean, if you want to live in it, right? Great. there's a lot of deals on condos. Do you know that in Miami, Florida, there were so many condos that were constructed? That wow. that the the uh, developers were like starting to put them up for bids, like you could bid on them, and pay a lot less than than the stated price. Wow. Okay. So what is that? What's the current state of condos in Los Angeles? I mean, it seems like every developer has got something going on. Well, that's what I'm saying. But the thing is, if you're not going to live in it for at least five years, don't do it. Okay. Just don't do it. Okay. Great, Tom. Thank you. I appreciate your advice. Uh, take me out old school? Sure I can. one 800 tom Real. 1-800-5800-866. This girl was about to flash me and she was unbuttoning her top. This guy with a war is not the answer. 
sticker and the Wave radio bumper sticker. Uh-huh. He's looking over at her, rear-ended the car in front of him. <laughs> Nothing major, but hey, man, that was the funny thing I said. I didn't get flat, but it was almost worth it. Now we know what the Wave listeners listen to when they're not listening to the Wave. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Randy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes. Hi. First of all, let me tell you that I 100% agree with everything you've been saying. Uh, you know, the way you come across is how you come across. I respect that. Um, second of all, let me tell you that I am one of said BBWs. Well, you know, give me two Bs if you want. Give me one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's all a matter of opinion and preference and, and whatever else. Uh that being said, I'm also one of the few fatties that did something about it and went from weighing 360 to dropping 180 pounds, still actively losing. Now, now, see, now, th- this is not a medical condition. This is a willpower condition. Well, you know what? It, it was willpower, and it was addiction, and it was depression, and it was a whole lot of mental things. And it was about getting through those mental things. Um, I used, what is Star Jones' word, medical intervention. <laughs> you know, I did have surgery. I needed a little life. You went to Dr. Swing Line? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I did what I needed to do. And I need, I did it for my health. I was tired of being unhealthy. I was tired of being uncomfortable. I was tired of not being able to breathe, not being able to walk up a flight of stairs without being winded, play with my kids. I was sick of it. And I did something about it. People agree with that decision. They don't, whatever. All that being said, um, I used to work for Lisa Marie of Club Bounce. <laughs> oh, really? Really. I am absolutely outraged. <laughs> at her at why you know i saw i didn't hear the first show two days ago um i listened to what i could yesterday i tried to call in and um couldn't get through of course and um i got snippets from the first show and the things that were said about the club and, and the plans of sending dino down there which i find amusing to be honest with you um and the fact that she used the fact she had posted a bulletin on myspace and this is before i deleted her and um said i was just on the tom likas show defending us fatties and i was like really on tom likas <laughs> defending us tom tom like is it the same tom likas in hollywood and yeah. you're defending fatties <laughs> knowing how he feels knowing what he says knowing who he is his opinions everything else and when you make those kind of defenses you dig yourself a deeper hole and you look like a freaking idiot <laughs> okay and then the next time um and said something about a camera crew coming down Nothing about what you guys had said. The next time she posted a bulletin promoting that night, um, she didn't mention anything about your show. She did mention camera crew will be in the house. You know, <laughs> so people are going to come and be there for this camera crew. And that's when it. And then I saw the bulletin the next day, of course, about how everything had happened, what was said, the bet, the deal, whatever. And <clears throat> it, it seems to me like she was using. Her two minutes of fame, so to speak, to exploit the community that she claims to want to build, support, unify, bring together. We all have one common goal, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. And that's what pisses me off. And this is not the first time with her in this kind of situation. I am going to get so much when I get off this phone. I am going to get so many phone calls and emails and hate mail. And, and you know what? That's okay. And I think a lot of it has to do is always very, very, very active in fatty land. And um, when Velocity was open in Hollywood, which was another fat club, which is also owned by these same promoters, I was one of their vixens. In fact, I was head vixen. And vixens were like Budweiser girls, just fat. <laughs> yes, would be the best way to describe it. And, but you know what? Granted, all the vixens were beautiful. We were all models, and it was legitimate modeling. It wasn't porn. It wasn't erotica. It wasn't any of that. It was calendars. It was catalogs. It was, you know, it was legit plus modeling, not whoring for fun. Well, you know, the thing with the vixens is there were a couple of girls that gone to the club on a regular basis that would advertise themselves on Craigslist, offer their services, meet me at the club. And um, because I was such a prominent face, not just me, but there are other girls, too, that are involved, um, because we had prominent faces, we were well-known in the community, we would get emails, requests, propositions from guys. I would get propositioned by guys wanting me to set them up with other vixens like I was their madam. And, you know, and it's just, it's these women that go to the clubs and whore themselves. It's these women that 
screw any guy that comes along just so they can get laid or just so they can feel that love for a moment. They let these fatty baggers take advantage of them, and these are the women that give the rest of us a bad reputation. So everybody thinks that, oh, you're fat, you're easy. You know, that's not necessarily true for the majority of the women that go to the clubs, but it's the ones that put themselves out there, and I heard you talking about the pictures on that site. Yes. Now, I know that you did see some pretty women there that carried themselves respectfully, but that's not what they want to show. They want to show these chubby chasers and fetishists the lard that's flopping around at the club. Well, by the way, uh, have you looked at the photos on the site that's linked, and I guess the businesses are linked, too, uh, for, like, lingerie yeah, and what have you? Swimsuits? I mean... Some of these women are downright scary looking. You know, here's my thing. Just because they make it in your size doesn't mean you should wear it. And there are so many flattering designs for plus women that flatter your body, that enhance your curves. I, I like curves now. There's a, there's a, at 360, I was huge, and I was not okay with that. You know, where I am right now, I'm about a size 12, 14, and I have curves, and I have a thickness, and, and I like that. Now, I, I didn't like where I was before, and, and I think that there's just, a line that doesn't need to be crossed in the fashion world. Yeah. Well, I, these photographs, I'm telling you, if anybody goes to that club bounce site and clicks through to the clothing section, right? just look at the photos. That, it, that's all it takes. It's not flattering. It's about wearing what flatters you, what looks good on you. And, you know, granted, a lot of these girls, too, they want to be models. They all want to be models, which is why, inevitably, a lot of them go into the BBW porn and erotica, you know, and make money that way. But a lot of them want to be legitimate models. So something like this comes along that may not be flattering to them or look good on them, but they're going to take it because that's all they can get. And I, I do have friends that have models for them, and that doesn't go for everybody. And, you know, some of those things on those women do match their body types and look good on them. But a lot of the things, especially the costumes and stuff, just don't. Horrific. You know, and uh, it, it's a lot of fat women have self-esteem issues to begin with and, and that's you know but yeah it's so frustrating it's even hard to to put into words sometimes it's i have this is like years of pent-up frustration at this whole organization and everything else involved with it you know it's disgusting and it not physically disgusting just what happens and the dynamics and the lack of morals and the lack of ethics and the lack of everything else involved just to make a buck and when you are exploiting it, it would just be the same as exploiting an ethnicity. Well, the, the fact is there are magazines that cater to certain races, certain ethnicities, yeah, uh, people absolutely. who have that fetish. Uh, there are magazines that uh, cater to the fetish of guys who want to look at very old people. There's mag magazines that cater to all kinds of fetishes. And, uh, you know, this is uh, just another kind of fetish. Randy, i got to move on. I thank you for the call. Let's say, oh, it's Tree on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's up with it, Tom? Like it's... Uh, much, Trey. You know, I got to call in and defend my big girls, man. You know I'm like the Superman of BBW land, man. I got to call in. What's up with it up in there? <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, you uh, you make a living playing records at, at a club with fat chicks. Actually, I don't make a living playing records. I'm an MC. You know, I'm an artist. You know, I'm not a DJ. And, I'm and not when you say you're an artist, artist, what does that mean exactly? I'm a rapper. You're a rapper? I'm a hip-hop artist. Mm -hmm. you know, what I did on YouTube, that was just a little response I did. You know, I did it off my laptop. That wasn't nothing I did. I couldn't studio, tell. You know, nothing like that. I did that in like about 10 minutes. And sent it really? To YouTube and you know, it was yeah, That took only 10 minutes to do? Wow. Yeah, you know. I mean, that was all. I was just defending my fatties, you know. My big <laughs> girls around the world. Thicker than a snicker. No model figures. I like them bigger. You know, this your boy right here. You know, I got to call in and defend. You know, this is what I'm about. I just feel that everybody has their preference in the world. You well, know, everybody does. Have, you know, their own opinion. You know, somebody else's opinion shouldn't be wrong or what they like and love, well, you know. Well, the, the, somebody else's opinion is wrong. If you have the opposite opinion, you think that the, the person who disagrees with you is wrong. That's the way it works. Yeah, but I can understand. Look, this, this is coming from a beautiful person. I mean, you kind of robust yourself there, too, though, Tom. 
I so mean, what? This is coming from a, a dude that was into physical fitness and you know really into it has nothing to do with it. Like that. I, I got kind of way halfway. Understand. I got money and I have a right to expect. Oh, so so your money makes you feel accepted, though. Yeah. Huh? Oh, I am accepted. Believe um, me. I'm just saying. So that's your money makes you feel accepted. Yes. Not you or who you are as a. Oh human no, being I I accept accepted. myself, but I'm telling you that that women accept me just the way I am because, because of your money, huh? So yes. Money, run out, Tom, money power, and fame. I'm a famous person. I got money. I got uh, you know. Position. That's cool, man. I'm just I'm just calling in to represent for BBW. We got a place in this society. I mean, look around. Yeah, I know you got a place. You know, in the LBC, I've seen it. Yeah, you know, and uh, to that first caller that called in on talking about he got 20 dudes on 20. This ain't no gang convention, dummy. This is a time like it show. You know, so you stay your punk ass on 20th and Myrtle with your extra tight jeans on. You know, we over here, we having fun. We being positive. We coming together for the community. You know. He didn't think you were positive at all. He yeah, he's talking like... to some old stuff. He's talking about he hollering out some old street stuff on the radio station, man. You stay your dumb ass on 20th and Myrtle, super stupid caller. Is everyone going to meet at 20th and Myrtle? Is that what's yeah, going down? About that. I'm not even from LBC. I'm a hip-hop artist. I'm worldwide <laughs> like the Internet, Tom. You understand me? I, I just ain't going to be, you know, uh, secluded to no one street. You know, I'm global like the Internet. Is that you know, so? You catch me anywhere, you know? This dude 20th and Myrtle, 19th and Myrtle. You know? He better 23rd bring his dumb ass off 20th and Myrtle and, you know, start trying to look around the world. Listen, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Trey, uh, this is Gary. I'm Tom's producer. We'd like to see this settled in a nonviolent way if we oh, could. No, I'm not about violence. You know, I'm about, I smoke too much weed to be violent. Yeah. <laughs> But listen, I mean, you, you know, Tom's talking about money. I mean, what what rappers don't rap about money? I mean, and and by the way, let me add to that: what rappers do you see with fat broads? I mean, Jay doesn't. I mean, red man, red, red man like fat broads. I mean, we've been taught as a society, you know, from little kids, this stuff been programmed into our mind. You know, we always pick on the fat kid. You know, if you were fat, you were uncool. If you was thin, you was in. You know, I'm just trying to say, like, hey, we here. Everybody has a preference. You know. Yeah, but it sounded like you were calling Tom out on on your uh, on your video there with you as the you know. I mean, as I'm the a rapper. Dog, that's, that's, how, Tom, that's how rappers attack stuff. You pussy, know, that's how we pussy verbalize cat stuff. Tom Likas huh. and that whole thing, man. It's not you were you were calling him out or something. No, it wasn't nothing, no violent thing or nothing oh. like that. That's just my response. I'm a rapper. That's how rappers respond. And that wasn't no song. That's just something I did on my laptop. You know, sent it in. Bam. I was I, I was worried about that because the quality sounded like it was you know a little on the. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah, you can go check out my MySpace. I got side. my music right there. You know, good quality sounding music. You know, MySpace dot com slash Prince of BBWism. <laughs> Prince of BBWism. Yeah, yeah, you know. How do you spell that? P R I N C E O F B B W I S M. Now, now, when's the last time you knocked it out with a fatty? When the last time I knocked it out with a fatty? Yeah, I think at the beginning of this show, goddamn. Yeah, hey, hey, we can't say that on the air. Now, now, so how big was she? I just have to know now. Well, you know what? You, you guys are keep like you know referring to big girls like yeah. three hundred pounds and. I mean, big girls come in all different size, shapes, and colors. Man, that's what's so beautiful about them. You know, they just don't come in. You know, are there any? Are there any hundred? Are there like any hundred and ten pound big girls? And, no, no, not at all. I mean, that one hundred and ten is not big. You said they come in all tall. sizes. Huh? Tree, I mean, look, tree. Come on, let me refer to you to the uh, the the clubbounce dot net site. You, you look at the galleries there, man. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, I'm on some of the galleries when I go to do my shows. There's you know? nothing under 200 in those galleries. Yeah, not are, not a man. single I mean, one. Some women that's considered, you know, maybe I say she's 5'2 and 180. She's considered a big girl, man. Women carry weight different. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? They carry weight different. They carry it. So in well, other you words, probably carry it just they only like look them. fat. You, you got your breast is probably big as a woman, so <laughs> you probably carry it just like them. So I can understand if you don't understand what I'm talking about. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Why you come feel me? Nah, I'm cool, man. I just like touching women. All right, Trey. I was uh, we were a little concerned about the you know this escalating into some kind of like a gang oh, no, war. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. That, I mean, the first caller that sure. called in. You know, he talking All about right. some old butter crunch stuff. He can stay on twenty for murder. I just want everybody to get along. I mean, I, I'm a dude that called in at his job. By the way, we'll laugh and stuff. He gonna let Tom get him yeah. fired. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. smoke the fatties. We just won't do them. <laughs> you gonna smoke? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, for sure, man. You gotta stay blazing that sticky, icky old weed, man. Put it in the air twenty four seven. I'm always a Bob Marley participant, man. <laughs> Well, Tree, this has just been a little slice of heaven. Tom Likas.
one 800 866 My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, 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 it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Like His Show. Like his show from Hollywood. Here is the stupidest story I've ever seen. And that's saying something. At least it's the stupidest story of recent memory. I bet you haven't seen this, Gary. Look at this. Dateline Denver. This is from uh, ESPN and uh, Associated Press. Rocktober. The new shorthand for the Colorado Rockies. Amazing playoff run. Is showing up everywhere now from newspaper headlines to handmade ballpark signs. But now the team wants a trademark to keep anyone else from selling keepsakes bearing the word Rocktober. <laughs> now, I got a little insider information, being that I work in the broadcasting industry. Every bad rock station in America has used the name Rocktober, going back to the 60s. I mean, you're never going to get a trademark on that, never, because I, there's there's a thousand bad rock stations that have used rock. It's Rocktober. Here's Leonard Skinner. Come on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, Minute Maid wants to trademark the, the phrase orange juice. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Rocktober. It's amazing. Jesus. The Rockies filed applications with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office on October 4th, asking for exclusive rights to the name on stuffed animals, Christmas stockings, baby booties, T-shirts, bobblehead dolls, and the like. You know, the reality is, though, it's it's likely that none of those stupid rock stations bothered to, you know, take care of that legally. I mean, it's uh, nobody would even assume to do that. I would bet everybody you, else has done it. I would bet you one of them did. You think? Yeah, one of them. I mean, I know growing up, NEW did that for I, for as long as I could remember. It was Rocktober. Yeah. And and KLOS used to have Rocktober right. here in L.A. And uh, WMMR in Philadelphia had Rocktober. I mean, you got to be kidding me. And it was just a, a just a term used to describe all the bad uh, ninety nine cent beer promotions, and everything that they were doing. They'd have a Rocktober calendar. Now down in the uh, in the southeast, uh, I mean in the south, it's just you know the, the rock stations are different uh, to begin with. But down in the southeast, it's it's kind of like the uh, cockfighting season. They call it Cocktober, and uh, I think they actually did. I think take, we used to call yeah, it that. Yes. Yeah. With a little rooster head next to it. That's right. Maybe we should check. Do we ever we take a service care? mark on Did that? Do we service mark that? Because we really should, Cocktober. Uh, absolutely. Now, that's not dog fighting. That's cock fighting. That's right. Just in case anybody's wondering about that. It, Which is a whole different right. ball of wax. I mean, and, a- they, it, and those stations would have events and stuff with cock fighting, and they call it Cocktober. Yes. And they did that for years. No doubt about it. I'd, I just can't believe somebody's trying to get a trademark on Rocktober. Jesus. I mean, I'm sure somebody owns the trademark of the phrase traffic and weather together. I've uh, I got the trademark for two for Tuesday. <laughs> it's like Pat Riley yeah, trademarked the word uh, three-peat. Yeah, the Rockies. Uh, that's, uh, that, is it possible? The Rockies have never heard. Maybe there's never been a rock station in Denver that ever said Rocktober. This is like the oldest thing in the world. I want to copyright Top 40. I want to copyright k Light Or Light FM. I want to own that. I, I, it's a little late. I want to copyright K-Rock. 
It's going to be mine. Anybody wants to put out items and say K Rock, they're going to have to pay me first. Rocktober. Only the Colorado Rockies can make money from calling something Rocktober. Jesus Christ. 1 800 5 800 Tom Eva on the top. Is this Eva or Eva? Eva. Eva. Yes. We're on the radio, Eva. Hi, Tom. How are you? Spectacularly fantastic. Hey, I have a question for you. My boyfriend listens to you all the time. And so I started listening just because I was curious. And, um, you know, I, I find you very interesting and whatever, but I, I find some contradictions or I find some interesting dy- dynamics in, like, what you... What you what you say you put out to the world and what you get back from the women that you date. Like I was listening to you yesterday about the women that made an appointment or didn't want to make an appointment and all of that stuff. And I agree with you on many of your points, but it's very interesting to me that you speak about the fact that because you have money and fame, um, you don't have to have anything else. Like you can get hot chicks just because of your mouth. We're on the air. As much as you talk about money grubbing, girls are gold diggers. Um, it's very interesting that the men you you actually encourage men to support that system. Like you encourage men to lie about like what they do for a living. Right, they when but younger. but but you don't understand here. I tell them also don't actually let them get their hands on the money. Pump them and dump them. Get what you want from these broads, and then when they start to say you never take me out to dinner, dump them. So you're just talking about the girls that you want to bang. You're not talking about you wouldn't actually have a relationship with a woman. I don't advocate relationships or marriage. I advocate banging. Right. Okay, well, it's just very interesting. Why is it that women like you don't know the difference between banging and relationships? I do. I understand the difference. I'm very clear on that difference. Well, then why don't you you understand this? Why is this so complicated to you? Because you you talk about get women with the money, but right. then women are gold diggers. Right, but, like, the, uh, but minute, because so because the reason that, they bang guys... us is because they're gold diggers. Do you understand? Okay, so the ones that don't bang you... Get it again! Less. One more time and you're off the air. Do you understand? This is a radio station. The ones that don't care about your money, that actually could care less about your money... Those are the ones that won't bang you for your money. So you just kind of toss those to curb or you actually date them longer. Probably date them longer if they're hot. Right. Okay, I just wanted to clarify because I just hear that so often. The minute a woman becomes high maintenance or too much work or the minute she starts making demands of any kind, I dump her. Right. I understand. Doesn't that make sense? I support you. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. And by the way, not all hot chicks are gold diggers. No one said that. I know. So it, does, it didn't need most. to be said. You just say most. I do, no, dear, don't tell me how to talk, okay? I am a broadcaster. We use generalizations because we have a broad audience. We are broadcasting, not narrow casting, broadcast. I know. I remember the conversation where you say never say all. I always say most. I, I don't even, I just say, I just say women, and meaning women in general. Right, I understand. I got it. I heard the whole broadcast. It isn't it. so. So you heard it, and you already know what I mean. And it is not necessary to get into a semantic debate with me about this. Right, right. I just wanted to clarify that you know what you were talking about about gold diggers. Here, you're the only one who doesn't understand. Everybody else listening understands. I tell okay. men specifically: don't let them have your money. Let them think you have money so they will have sex with you as a loss leader. You know, they'll have sex with you as an investment in the future, hoping to get your money in the future. Later, when they try to get your money, cut them off at the knees. I see. I I understand. It's all very clear now. And as far as I'm concerned, if you want me to be Dr. Shapiro, I'm Dr. Shapiro. (laughs) All right, Tom. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. You too, Eva. Jesus. Just amazing. Here we are, Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show with headlights on across North America. Ladies, did you see somebody with the headlights on here? (laughs) Show him your knockers. He's a loyal listener. 
Uh, coming up, does the program director of a major market radio station need his own theme song? Apparently he thinks so. We'll get into that coming up. And more of your telephone calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. Email us, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.